Today we begin our adventure into chapter 6. And chapter 6 is a lot about exponents and different different kinds of exponents, rational exponents and, and whatnot. So as we go through this, um, you may be learning some things that you have uh, seen before and you may be learning some things that you have not seen before. The first section is to evaluate nth roots and use rational exponents. So what you first have to know is what an nth root is. When we talk about roots, the, the most popular one we talk about is like the square root, the square root of 25. And there is a 2 right here, but it's always assumed that there's a 2 there. When we talk about an nth root, we're talking about the nth root of a here. a would be in here, and this would be the nth root of it, where n could be any number, any whole number, and a could be any number. The real nth roots of a, when you look at you know how it sets up, when a is less than 0 and n is an even integer, so the square root of a negative number, you're not going to get any real nth roots. It does not exist to have a real nth root, so we end up with no real nth roots. But when n is an odd integer and a is less than 0, it is possible to get like the cube root of negative 8 which is negative 2. And so what you'll get is one real answer. And another way to write this is a to the 1 over n power. And so you might want to do something like if you did the square root of 25. On your calculator, just try this, 25 to the 1 half power. And you'll find you get the same answer. A, when a is 0, well, there's only one answer. The nth root of 0 is always going to be 0. And that's if n is even or odd. The same answer is just 0. When, when n is an even number and a is positive, we're going to have two answers, and that's going to be the positive negative a to the 1 over n power. And when it's odd, you only get one real answer. It's just the positive, a to the 1 over n power. All right. Let's take a look at an example. Maybe that example will make a whole heck of a lot more sense than just those words are. When n is 3 and a is negative 64, because n is 3 and it's odd, and negative 64 is less than 0, meaning it's a negative number, Negative 64 is going to have one cube root, or one real cube root anyways. All right. Because what number, what number question mark here, to the third power is negative 64. And you know that negative 4 to the third power is negative 64. You can write the cube root of negative 64 as negative 4. Or negative 64 to the 1 third, third power is negative 4. And you could check that on your calculator. Let's go over real quick how to do that on a calculator, just so we all know. On your calculator, you're going to have negative 64, and I would put parentheses around it, negative 64. You can do it to the 1 divided by 3 power. And that's going to get me negative 4. You could also do a cube root. And to find a cube root, if you go under, I believe it's math. Yeah, there it is, number 4. The cube root of negative 64, just like that. But if you want to do like a different root, if you wanted to do the fifth root of 32, or the fifth root of negative 32, when you go under math, you see that x root right there, number 5? So if I clear that out and I put a 5 in, and then I do a fifth root, I do a fifth root like number 5, fifth root of, and let's do, I don't know, negative 32, just to prove that we can do it with negatives. We get a negative 2. So that's how you would write that on your calculator. All right. If we're trying to find the uh, n is 6 and a is 729, uh, 729 is a positive number. So if, if it's a positive number and we have an even root, we're going to have two answers. We're going to have the positive 
and negatives, or we're going to have two real sixth roots. So two sixth roots of this thing. All right. Um, because 3 to the 6th power is 729, how would I find that? I would put that in my calculator. What's the 6th root of 729? And negative 3 to the 6th power is 729. My answer is going to be positive negative 3. All right, you guys go ahead and do the checkpoint. Pause the video, work on these problems for just a moment. All right, welcome back. Hopefully, you simply just did the fourth root of 256, and you could put that in your calculator, or you could think about it. But any way you cut it, you got positive negative 4. And on this other one, you did the cube root of 512, and you got an 8. Hopefully, you just typed that into your calculator, and, and it was able to find that. When we're looking at rational exponents, you have to be a little careful. So if something's to the a to the m over n power, a to the m over n power, it breaks down so that it's a to the 1 nth to the m, or the nth root of a all to the m power. If it's to a negative power, as we learned in the last chapter, everything flips upside down. So this goes to the bottom. And again, you have a nth root of a. This might pose a problem because you can't have square roots or any kind of roots on the bottom of a fraction, so you have to be careful of that. Let's take a look at example two here. In example two, we have uh, 8 to the negative 4 thirds power, so right away that thing is going to look like 1 over 8 to the 4 thirds power. Alright? Or I'm going to need probably more room, so I'm going to do it over here. 1 over the cube root of 8 to the fourth power. And what I've done then is I made it so it's 1 over the cube root of 8 is 2 to the fourth power. And 2 to the fourth power is 16, so I get 1 over 16. And that, that could be a good answer. The other way that you could do it is if you if you made it over a cube root. So there's you know this is the this is I guess the radical way. The rational way would be to call it one over eight to the one third power, and then take whatever you get there to the fourth power. That's that's kind of your choice. Um, e either one is going to work just fine. Let's let's take a look at example three and how I would solve an equation using that information. Well, on the first thing I would do here is I would divide both sides by 2 because I divide first when I'm doing PEMDAS backwards. And so I end up with 729. So I end up with x to the 6th power equals 729. Well, if I do the 6th root of both sides, or they, I do the 6th root of 729, I get 3 on my calculator. But my calculator fails to show me is that it's positive negative 3. You have to be careful of that. You have to always be cognizant of the fact that you're going to end up with that positive negative when you're taking an even root of something. When I look at B, my first step has to be the cube root 12. So I take the cube root of 12. Well, the cube root of 12 is really nothing fancy. And so it ends up just being the cube root of 12 minus 4, because I subtract 4 on both sides. And that ends up being a decimal negative 1.71. Alright, let's take a look at this next page here. On, the, on our final page of our notes, um, we have a word problem. And the word problem says the population P of a certain animal species after T months can be modeled by P equals C times 1.21 to the T over third power, where C is the initial population. Find the population after 19 months if the initial population was 75. Find the population after 19 months if the initial population was 75 and C is that initial population. So what I have is 75 times 1.21 to the 19 over 3 power. Well this is not going to be pretty at all. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to my calculator and I'm going to type that in. So I turn my calculator on and I get 75 times 1.21 to the, and I'm going to do, I'm just going to put it in 19 divided by 3 power and make my life easier. And I'm going to get 250. So that's what my current population is, or my population after six months is about 251. So if I go back here, it's about 251. So you just kind of plug and chug your way through that. Go ahead and try checkpoint number three and four. Pause the video for a moment. All right, welcome back. Let's take a, let's take a look at what you have there on example three. Well, it's negative, it's a negative power, so it's gonna be one over negative 125, and I'm going to take it to the third power first. I know my handwriting's not great. And then I'm going to take it to the squared. And so if I take the one-third power of that, I end up with 1 over negative 5, right? But now I square it, and when I square it, I end up with 1 over 25. Hopefully you got that. On this next one here, you took the fourth root of 200, and that didn't end up being anything too magical. So then you, later you added 3 to it, and you got 6.76. The only problem is when you got that decimal, you should have got the positive negative fourth root of 200. So you wanted to add 3 to both numbers. So on one end, you ended up with 6.76. On the other one, you ended up with negative 0.76. Uh, this probably was 3.76, right? So, and on your word problem here, we can talk about this more tomorrow, but you should have got 1.99. All right, we can talk later. Thanks a lot, guys, and uh, have a happy day.